right, right. Good morning. I, uh, I had it all together this week, and I forgot where I put it. So we're, uh, <laughs> pastor's having a little bit of a rough day today, but we're going to get through it. Amen. Uh, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Amen. And we're going to rejoice and be glad in it and let him be uh, glorified and magnified today. So we're glad that you're here today and looking forward to a good service. Do we have any very first time guests? Very first time. We want to embarrass you really good. No, I'm just kidding. All right, just slip your hand up for a minute. We're going to get you a guest card. All right, Roger, you got a row of them right there. This is our, uh, these are our guests from Gamblers Anonymous. Uh, they're just visiting with us today. But uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> they're not visiting ever again now. But, but uh, all right, one right over there. There you go. Thank you. Anybody else? Do we miss you? All right, if you do this, just fill that card out, and after the service, I know we have baptisms right after the service. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Amen. Three of you are excited. Yeah, yeah, good. No, I'm kidding. But uh, that'll be a good time, so I know we have baptisms, but I try to at least greet you on the way out to the baptisms, but uh, if you'll give us that card at the end of the service, we'll give you a nice gift to take home, and we do thank you and appreciate you being with us today. Of all the places you could have gone, you chose to be here. Thank you for being with us. We appreciate that. So let's have a word of prayer real quick, uh, and then we'll make a couple of a quick announcements, and then we'll uh, greet everybody and get moving this morning. All right, let's pray. Father, we, we come to you today, Lord. We just thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your blessings. Uh, we thank you, God, for watching over each and every one of us, meeting our needs, providing for us. And, Lord, we just, uh, we just want to praise you today for uh, who you are, not just what you do. And, uh, Lord, we ask you now as we meet together in your house with your people, we pray that you'll bless uh, the service as it goes forward. Uh, may you use it, Lord, to encourage us, to strengthen us, even to teach us and challenge us a little bit this morning, we pray. And, uh, Father, we thank you for our guests this morning. We pray that they'll receive a, a hearty and a warm welcome and leave thankful that they were here today. And we ask you just to bless everything we do today. May you be lifted up, we pray. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, a couple of fast, quick, speedy. Expedient, any other words I can use? Announcements, all right? Um, just kind of, we don't usually do this on a Sunday morning, but I think we need to be aware with some of the things going on. So just some prayer requests real quick. Uh, Nancy Fuller is in Benson Hospital in rehab. Uh, if you want to talk to Jeff, you can call him. They're asking for no visitors at this time. We'll let you know if that changes. But if you want to call them, I know she'd appreciate that. He would as well. Uh, Mary Forney's still in TMC, uh, open to phone calls or visits. If you want to go by and see her, I know she appreciates that as well. Alice did come home from the hospital, which is a blessing. Uh, but I know she'd be open to at least a phone call right now. Maybe not a visit just yet. She'll get there. But uh, you, we're thankful for that. And then, of course, Kathy Vasallo as well. Her, her daughter did pass away. We've been praying for her after that uh, car accident. So uh, be in prayer for Kathy and her family as well. And then one other just kind of a quick note for you ladies, because you men don't care. Uh, my wife is going to be unavailable for a little while. If you need to talk or text her, uh, please try to go through me or even Penny, and Penny can kind of relay some stuff. Uh, so if you've called her recently or texted her recently and not gotten a response, it is not because she's mad at you. It's because she's mad at me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, she's going through some 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 pretty rough changes right now with some meds and things like that. So, uh, so just kind of just if you need something, we'll try to be available best we can. But you won't probably get a hold of her. So, just thought I'd make you aware instead of you texting her every day. Why isn't she answering? Just text me or call me or even Penny would work at the at the office here. So just remember that if you would, we appreciate that. And prayers for all those we just mentioned. I know it's always appreciated. Uh, remember J uh, Justin as well. Justin, where you at? There you go. Uh, Justin's heading Tuesday to see his sister. He's flying to Baltimore. His sister's got some cancer issues and not doing well. So uh, so pray for him for safety. And of course, his sister Amy as well. She deals with that. And I know, I'm sure there's a hundred other prayer requests if we were to ask right now. But those are some very specific ones that we uh, just needed to mention this morning. Uh, so remember that. Tonight, six o'clock, uh, we'll start. Uh, finally, after like three week delay we'll kick off our connection groups and so excited about that we'll have a class for our kids a class for our teens of course adults you always got something going on but uh so if you got kids and you have teenagers uh they obviously are encouraged to come because we do have something for them uh their own time of learning so remember that if you would tonight at six uh right after the morning service we'll be baptized and i mentioned that uh lunch bunch is always available if you'd like to stay after service and go to fellowship hall so we'll do that and gather for lunch everyone is welcome and uh you're encouraged to do that for some fellowship there as well and then next Next Sunday, next Sunday, oh, wait a minute, before I announce next Sunday, if you haven't gotten your background check and you've volunteered to help with our children, please get one picked up and get that taken care of online so that we can get you uh, going in service, okay? Uh, if you don't have one, bad news, 
bad news. That's all I'm going to say. No, I'm kidding. But we'll, we'll hunt you down because you do have to have this. So make sure you get that. Uh, there's some on the back table. I have some. We can always text you the link, and you can do it on that type of thing as well. But uh, make sure you get that done. Uh, and then next Sunday, the most important announcement of the day, right? Next Sunday is a fifth Sunday, which means what? food right so next sunday right after our morning service we'll go over to fellowship hall it'll all be set up uh we just do a potluck everybody brings enough food to feed like six armies and uh we eat we fellowship we have a really good time over there uh do a little bit of cleanup and then right we'll do that that week is right after we're done eating we'll go ahead and st come over and go into our connection groups rather than having a break in those and doing something different we'll just continue our connection group since we're so so, so far behind already uh so we'll we'll have our morning service we'll eat we'll come back for connection groups and uh and then we'll go from there for the rest of the day so just want to let you know that make sure you pay attention there won't be a six o'clock next week because we'll do our connection groups right after lunch all right that clear is mud yeah. everybody has a bulletin uh if you don't know call the office it'll be online everything's out there it'll be on facebook so you should be able to pay attention to all that kind of stuff all right but uh, we appreciate that a lot of changes a lot of new things happening and we're thankful for that amen i'm, I'm glad to see people that like to be with each other yeah. amen because there are some churches that don't. So it's good to be able to do that. So we're, we're thankful for that. So, All right, we're going to do about five minutes. Ryan's going to show a video here. It'll play through a little countdown there. About five minutes. If you need to use the restroom, get a drink, shake some hands, greet one another, greet our guests, of course. And then we'll come right back up and start singing together this morning.
All right, if you haven't found your place yet, you don't have one. I'm kidding. You always have a place here, but uh, have you found your seats? We're going to get started with some singing this morning. Let me get this out of the way. Yes, we've got a brand new addition to the uh, music team this morning. He is our bass singer, and uh, he'll do a good job. He was just ready to come up with the kids. I said, just stay. You're good. That's all right. So he's fine. He's fine if you're okay, Mom. You okay? All right, you can stay. You can stay with me, all right? You're going to sit. Hey, are you going to sing? Okay. All right, you're on. All right. You heard him. Y'all heard him. All right. We're going to start with What a Mighty God We Serve, and we'll sing that through about three times. And uh, if you don't know what key changes are, <laughs> you're okay. None of us know either. But there's some key changes in here, so just, 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 just make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen? All right, let's sing, Abby. <laughs> What a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him, what a mighty Big people sit down. Say, kids, come up. Dip up. All right, come on. You heard him. <laughs> the kids get up here and it's like a reunion. I haven't seen you in a week. That's <laughs> I love it. I love it. All right. Welcome. Welcome. Come on up. We're going to sing our song, Obedience, 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 and then we'll do our little lesson, okay? Y'all ready? How many of you obeyed this week? Let me see your hands. Only three of them. Is that true, parents? Are we, is that probably pretty accurate? <laughs> obedience, 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 all right? All right, let's sing this song together. Our adults will help us because they know it very well, all right? You guys ready? You guys remember the letters? Me either. All right, let's go. <laughs> Here we go. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Doing exactly what the Lord commands. Doing it happily. Action is the key. Do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. You guys ready? Oh. B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Did all those letters make sense to you? No. Me either. Me either. All right. We'll learn them one of these days. All right. Let's do it one more time, and then I'll have you get seated, and we'll do our little lesson, okay? All right, boys. Boys, hang on. Hey, boys. Boys, settle down. We're going to sing. You ready? Maverick, obedience. You ready? Here we go. 
Maverick, come help me. Come help me. Come help me. You don't want to help me? You wanted to help me last week. Come out here. Come right here. You look at this section right here. You look at this section right here, and you let them sing for you. You help them, teach them to sing, okay? You ready? I'll stand. Well, I'll stand right here with you. You ready? Here we go. Ready? Oh, look at them. You got to look at them. Ready? Oh, obedience is the very best way. You help me? Show that you be lead. Do your hands like this. Doing exactly what the Lord can make. Doing it happily. Action is the key. Do it immediately. Joy you will receive. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. I spell it. Ready? O B E D I E N C E. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. All right, everybody, come right up here and have a seat. Give yourselves a round of applause. Good job. All right. All right. Remember what obedience is? It's obeying. It's doing what you're told. When you're, when you're told with what? A good, a good attitude. Look at that. They've been listening and learning. Good job. All right, boys, here we go. Today's lesson, are you ready for this? I'm going to need a helper, and I'm going to pick somebody who's being really super good, who's sitting up straight and tall. All right, hang on. I'll pick you in just a second. Here we go. Today's lesson. Are you ready about this? We're going to learn about trusting God. What does it mean to trust God? What does that even mean? How do we explain that? Gus, what's that mean to trust God? You believe he'll hear and answer your prayer? Yeah. yeah. Very good, good. Very good. It's, it's believing God. That's what trusting in God is. If there you go. If God says he'll do it, he'll do it. All right. Now let me ask you guys a question. <laughs> Maverick, you are you are wound up today, dude. <laughs> I wish I had half that energy. So so let me ask you a question. Does God ever tell us or put us into situations in our life? Guys, you gotta listen. You gotta listen. I'm about to have you sit down, okay? Maverick, come come away from your brother for a minute, okay? Come over here. That way you guys don't fight, okay? So, so let me ask you a question, kids. Does God ever do something in your life that you don't understand? <laughs> you got him. <laughs> That's okay. You're good. Does he ever do that? Yes. Okay. So, so let me ask you a question. Has anything ever happened to you in your life and you were like, why did that happen? Yes? So let me ask you another question. Does God always know what he's doing? Yes. yes. He does. Sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe dad lost a job. Maybe mom got really sick. Maybe my brother uh, got hurt at school. Maybe I got bullied. We don't know the situation, but, but God allows us to go through things in our life so that we learn to just trust him. Because here's the thing. God does not allow anything to happen in our life without him saying, I know it's happening. God doesn't make any mistakes. So we have to learn, even when it's hard, to trust God. When you trust somebody, what it means is this. Whatever you say, I, I believe. It'd be like this. Have you ever seen people do those trust falls where they stand up like this and they tell the person, just fall, we'll catch you, and you got to trust them to catch you or you break your face on the ground, right? You know what I'm talking about? That's trust. Trust is when your mom and dad say, you know, eat this breakfast. I cooked it for you. I promise it's good. you got to trust them, right? Uh, <laughs> when they tell you, don't put your hand on a hot stove because it'll burn you, you got to trust them. They know what they're talking about, right? So what I want to do is I want one of you today, and I think I'm going to pick Jason because he wanted to help last week and, and he didn't get to. So come here, Jason. You get to help me today. Now, you gotta ask, you got to ask you a question, okay? Here's the question. Look me right in the eyes. Do you trust me? Would you do anything I asked you to do? I mean, and good. I'm not talking about something bad. But if I said, you do this and it'll be good, would you do it? Okay, so you trust me. Okay. Okay, all right, so you wait right here. Don't move. What are you Maverick, I have right here a bag full of water. Oh, Jason, did I call you Maverick? I'm sorry, buddy. I know Maverick's not up here. Jason, sorry. I have a bag full of water. You want to touch that to make sure it's water? Okay, yeah. that's water, okay? Now, Jason, here's what I'm going to tell you. If you will trust me, I promise I will not spill water on you. Do you trust me? Yeah. Now, Jason, do you trust me if I would say I'm going to stick a pencil in this bag of water? Yeah. You still trust me? Yeah. Okay, let's see. You trust me? Yeah. Do you trust me? Yeah. Did you get wet? No. 
You trusted me. What about, what about I try another pencil? No water. No water. Well, let's try another one. Let's see, let's see if you really trust me. Oh, we got a little bit on that one. <laughs> the trust factor ran out. <laughs> Push my luck. So, so you trusted me, right? Yeah. You said, you t I told you, you won't get wet. And I even stuck pencils in that water and you didn't get wet until I pushed it too hard, right? Yeah. That's trust. You didn't say, oh no, don't do that. I don't believe you. You trust now. Now that doesn't seem possible, does it? To stick a pencil in a bag of water and it not to get you wet, does it? That's what God does. He does in our lives things that we look at and think that's not possible, but God can do that. And so, whenever you're going through a hard time, if your parents are struggling, you're struggling at school, whatever it may be, realize this: God knows that you're in a hard time, but God will take care of you. He always does. You can trust Him no matter what. Okay, that's trusting God. God says it. I believe it. All right, thank you for your help today. I'm going to give you a, uh, do I have candy up here? I don't have candy up here. I'll give you candy after church, okay, for helping me. Thank Actually, you know what? I got something better than candy. Hold on a minute. I got something every kid wants. Calvary Cash, baby. Yeah, all right. Make sure that gets in your uh, box over there when you get over to the kids club, okay? All right, kids, thank you for listening. Always trust God. He knows what he's doing. Even when you don't understand, God always knows, okay? You can trust God. He'll never let you down, all right? All right, we're going to tell the kids to get out on out of here. Yes, ma'am, Rosie, hold on. You got a question? No, I, I, done, blew, I done popped it, man. <laughs> I can put it over your head and stick another one. You want me to do that? No, my head. No, you already squirted me in the eye. Get out of here. <laughs> All right, kids, we're going to get you over to class. Thank you for listening. You did great. And we will see you in just a little bit. Okay, Gus, you want your Bible? See you, dude. <laughs> see you, Josh. See you, buddy. All right. Let me switch microphones back here. Just for the record, um, I did six pencils this morning and it didn't leak. I just kept on, kept on, kept on, but uh, we didn't make it. That's all right. It's all good. God never, God never pops the bag. Amen. He never lets the water rain down. He, he knows what he's doing. We can, we can trust him a whole lot better than we can trust me. Amen. Amen. All right, let's read some scripture together this morning. We'll get started singing, and uh, we're going to start in Psalm 145. Church, you read this aloud together with us uh, this morning. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. I love that, I love that phrase, thy great goodness. See, God's just not good. He's great at being good. And what a wonderful God we serve this morning. Let's sing together. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God, He reigns from heaven above 
Psalm says this in chapter 48, church. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king.
be at this part of the team. My dad, did I die? I'm dead. You're dead. That's right. Can you still hear me? I'll just, I'll just repeat it every time. Hold on a minute. Let me, let me stoop down to Heidi's level. I'm kidding. <laughs> Let's read just a couple of verses here together before Julie comes and sings for us this morning. Just to cap off uh, that song and that singing that we just did about how awesome our God is. Uh, let's read Psalm 96 together this morning. Here we go. Oh, sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Show forth his salvation from day to day. Amen. Declare his glory among the heathen, his wonders among all people. For the Lord is great and greatly to be praised. He is to be feared above all gods. In case you were wondering, that was a picture of me at the end. We uh, have run into technical difficulties this morning, so you're going to have to follow along on purpose today. There's no slides. Um, the time was spent preparing the slides. <laughs> the slides were made and brought over, but apparently they were not saved, and that is 100% Ryan's fault. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. I just I got to throw one of the bus every now and then, but no, that's, that's my fault. I don't know what happened. So you're just going to have to follow along on the b back of the bulletin is the outline. Uh, so you have to spell the words uh, on your own. Sorry. Uh, but uh, we we'll survive, won't we? What did we do before we had uh, the screens, right? What did we do before we had all of it? Anyways, some of you came from when they were you know, writing you know, with a quill and, and parchment, so you know, you'd be all right, okay? But uh, so anyways, we're going to continue our series this morning. As you saw, we just started last week on hot mess, and uh, we talked last week about how it's just a reality that our family Many times we come to situations where we look at it and say, man, it's a hot mess. Uh, there's things going on. And uh, there are many ways today. We're going to talk about a different topic. We're going we're gonna, to... Uh, I don't know. I think it's an important talk topic because I struggle with it. And I thought if I struggled with it, there's probably other people that could use the help. And uh, I want to talk this morning about my schedule is a hot mess. My schedule is a hot mess. There's, there's, there's a lot of ways to kind of plan and come up with a daily routine and try to kind of keep things in order. You know, people use calendars, and it used to be PDAs. I don't even know those exist anymore, but uh, some people still write stuff down. They put on their smartphone. They have alarms and, and all these types of things that they do today. But inevitably, it always seems like at some point during the week, you're like, man, I wish I had more time. Man, things have just come crazy. I didn't get this done. You know, you know. And all of a sudden, that, that hot mess, that it's out of control. I don't know how to handle this. All of a sudden, that becomes our schedule. And we're trying to get from day to day, from moment to moment, trying to accomplish all this stuff. And it just seems like we never have more time. Now, I'm going to tell you something real honest this morning. God is never going to give you more time than he gives anybody else. But I do believe all in my heart there's some biblical principles we can follow to make the time that does, God does give us help us in a better way and in a better fashion and be more usable to us. And it seems like we have more time, even though we don't. Uh, so I want to look at this topic of hot mess this morning. And again, that's that, uh, if you've never heard that phrase, you're not familiar with it, probably most of you are. It's that thing that's just, it's out of control. It's, it's chaos. It's, man, I, oh, it's crazy. And sometimes that's our family. Amen? How many of you can testify? 
Amen. We've all been there. Man. If you didn't raise your hand, you you lying in God's house. Amen. <laughs> We've all been there at some time. Amen. It happens. It happens. And the same thing is true with our schedule this morning. And so as we look at this and we think about our schedule, I want to, first of all, explain, I think you know this already, it gets chaotic at times, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Doesn't it sometimes you wake up and one is like, I, I should just stay in bed because there's no way I'm going to get everything done. Right? I might as well skip it all, right? Uh, it gets chaotic, and man, pull stress, and this, and family, and job, and all, and all this stuff starts pulling at us, and it looks like we can't just, we can't accomplish anything we need to accomplish. As we look at that, how do you manage your schedule? I mean, again, uh, calendar, you know, smartphone, alarms, those type of things, time management practices, and, and less, you know, how do you do it? It's a struggle sometimes. And I want to give you some biblical help this morning. I, I really think all these are very important to help us manage our time properly so that we don't have to come to those times so often we're like, ah, I'm pulling my hair out, what little I have. My schedule's crazy. How do we do it? How do we do it? Uh, I think this will go somewhat hand in hand with our lesson on family because you know that's the most important people in our lives, right? And so we've got to make sure some of our schedule includes, includes them and helps them. But here's the thing. When our schedule is a hot mess, you know who usually suffers the most? Those closest to us. Those closest to us. Usually our family. You know? so, so they kind of go work, work hand to hand together. So if you've got a Bible this morning, it's not on the screen, so I hope you got one or it's on your phone or look at your neighbors uh, or just listen, whatever you'd like to do. We're going to go to, it's going to be hard to find, Genesis <laughs> chapter 2. Now, remember last week, we, we, we were like in the whole book of Genesis. You remember? We covered from Abraham to Joseph and the dysfunctional families that each one of them had in between there. We're, we're not going to do that there. Just Genesis 2, okay? We'll look at some other scripture as well, but we're going to start there. Genesis 2. You all found that? If you found it, say amen. amen. If you haven't found it, don't say amen because then we'll, you'll be pointed out. So stand with me out of respect for the reading of God's word. And let's look at just the first three verses, and then I'll pray. You can be seated. We'll jump right in and hit the ground running, all right? Genesis 2, verse number 1. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. What a, what a fantastic verse. You might gloss over that in your day-to-day -day reading if you read through Genesis, but what, what, a, what a verse. God said, before Jesus said it on the cross, God said, it's finished. It's done. I've completed my work here. I've created everything. By the way, that's how it happened, okay? That's, how, that's why we're here. That's how we got here. That's why the world is here. He created it. Amen? Amen. All right, so look at verse number two. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all of his work which God created and made. And let's pray. Father, we love you this morning. We thank you so much for your blessings and your uh, help and your watch uh, care in our lives, your provision. And thank you for the service this morning. Lord, it's just been, it's just been refreshing to sing about your goodness and, and your power and your might and your love for us. And uh, you truly are an amazing God. May we never lose sight of that this morning. And Lord, as we try to uh, just finish our service off from your word, we, we ask, Lord, that we'll continue to magnify you and, and, and make you preeminent and, and proclaim you this morning. May this be about you and not about me or us. Father, I pray you empty me of sin and self this morning. Fill me with your spirit. May I say what you'd want said. And uh, may this topic be covered biblically. It may help us this morning because we all struggle with this from time to time. Help us in this area, Lord, of schedule, I pray. Lord, as always, if there's one here that's, that's with us or on, watching us online that does not know Christ, Lord, I pray today would be the day they realize just how much you love them, that you sent Jesus to die on the cross to take away their sins. If they were the only person in the entire world, you would have died for them, Christ. And may they understand that today. And may they, may they call out and trust you as their personal Lord and Savior today for their forgiveness of their sins in their home in heaven, I ask. Father, we ask you now as we uh, preach for the next few moments, we pray that you'll bless it. May again, may it help us and challenge us and encourage us this morning. We pray and we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 Thank you. You can be seated. I got, I'm, I'm used to having that clicker in my hand, and now I don't have it. So can I hold it? Can I hold it? It's like my security blanket. Can I hold it just to push the button even though nothing happens? But uh, <laughs> my schedule is a hot mess. Have you ever been there? You ever been there this week? Just this last week has been a whirlwind in my life. I don't know about you, but uh, it's been like, what's going on? <laughs> you know, I, I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow. So uh, we all go from time to time like that. And, and, and we like to sit down. If you're like most normal human beings, you like to sit down and, and hey, Logan, <laughs> what are you doing over there? 
<laughs> you never said over there, man. You threw me off. I looked over there. I saw what's the slogan doing? Anyways, welcome, welcome to the spit section, my man. But anyways, uh, <laughs> um, you know, we, we like to plan, right? And you like to try to plan your week or your month or who's coming when the in-laws are coming to visit. You got to plan to be on vacation, right? I, I get all that. You, you, you work through all those things, but um, you, you know, there's planning that takes place. But we have to understand something. We can make all the plans we want. Okay, God's still in control. God's still in control. But as we're thinking about, man, how do I avoid the chaos in my schedule? I want to give you three, I think, really important and really powerful truths from Scripture that we see that will help us manage uh, that schedule so that God can be... Because here's the thing. When I don't schedule properly, my family suffers, and usually God suffers in my relationship with Him. And, and so how do we do it? Let me give you number one. Number one, find Sabbath rest. Find Sabbath rest. Now, we know the difference today between the Sabbath day and Sunday, and we, we do it a little bit differently than the Jews did and that kind of thing. And uh, we see that God rested here on the seventh day, and then he sanctified that day as, as a day of rest. But if you've looked at Genesis 2, we just read that, that verse, uh, those verses there this morning, and it kind of lays the groundwork for us of finding Sabbath rest. Now, if you're new to church, that term, you're probably like, what? I, I, I don't get it. Here's, here's what happens, okay? In six literal 24-hour periods, and you can disagree with me if you want, but I think you're wrong. In six literal 24-hour periods, God created everything that exists. The grass, the ground, the sea, the skies, the stars, the moon, the suns, the men, the women, the animals, the tigers, the lions, the lions and tigers and bears, oh my, right? Created it all in six days. And on day seven, God did something. We see it in Genesis 2 that we just read. The Bible says that he rested from all his work, for all he was doing, he rested. What a powerful reminder for us today. In the busyness of life, in the busyness of family, in the busyness of society, in the busyness of work and schedule and all that type of thing, one of the things we sometimes feel guilty about is just saying, I need to stop and breathe for a minute. I need, I, need to, I need to rest. I've struggled with this most of, my, most of my adult life. I've struggled with just saying, I'm shutting everything down, and I'm just going to rest today. I've struggled with it. You've struggled with it. The thing we need to be reminded of is this. God shows us the example of it. He rested. If you take your Bible, you don't have to turn it away. If you want to, you can. John chapter 5, in verse number 17, I want to show you what it says. It says this, But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. And I work. An all-powerful God rests. But if you look at John 15, verse number 7, I don't think God was saying, according to Jesus, I don't think God was saying, I'm resting because I'm tired. Jesus said, I, I work, follow works, I work. It's all work, okay? But on the seventh day, he rested. There's, a, there's an idea in studying Scripture it's called uh, biblical tension. And I don't know if you've heard this phrase or not. I'm going to learn you something today, okay? If you've never learned something, this will, this will help, hopefully help you. Uh, and essentially what it means is this. When you read the Bible, you take two verses and you hold them in tension together with each other. Bob, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying, okay? And, and those verses, that you hold them in tension together. Uh, when you do that, and you take Genesis 2, and you take John 15, and you hold those together, what you find is this. God was not resting from his work because he was weary and worn out and exhausted and tired. Instead, I believe what he's doing is he's putting into practice a model for us to follow. Uh, an example for us to follow. He desires, okay, when we get saved, right, which he wants everybody to do, not everybody will, but that's his plan and his desire. When we get saved, what's the next step that he wants every person to do? Be more like Jesus. So therefore, he gives us examples in Scripture of what he was like so that we can learn from him and grow, right? Here's one of them. He rested. He rested. Uh, it's a model for us. The creator of the cosmos says this, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to rest. Matter of fact, it's good for you. And by the way, it's not just God that says that. Scientists will tell you that. Doctors will tell you that. It's good for you. Uh, he shows us this. If the creator of the universe can stop and say, I'm done, I'm, I'm going to rest, am I better than God? No. If he can do it, don't you think I can do it? Sure I can. Sure I can. Six or seven years ago, I was, I had a very difficult time getting physical rest. 
I would sleep at night, and sometimes I'd, get, I'd be in the bed for nine or ten hours, and I'd wake up the next morning physically exhausted. I was tired. I, I, I'm not kidding you. I, I, could, I could be sitting down watching Cliff. I could be watching the Buckeyes just annihilate the Huskers. I mean, just, just I, yeah, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> just destroying and watch my favorite sport, and I'd fall asleep in the middle of a game. That's not me. I could sit in my recliner and the minute I sat down and, and, and looked down, I was out in the middle of the day. I, 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 I'd be on my phone uh, playing a game or, or texting somebody and fall asleep in the middle of a text. And I'm like, what is wrong with me? I was in bed for 10 hours. And I ended up going to the doctor. I ended up asking for some, you know, what, what is happening? What's going on? They did some tests. I ended up getting tests. I had sleep apnea, and I couldn't sleep at night because I couldn't breathe at night. And I'd wake myself up, I don't know, 5,000, million, hundred, I don't know how many times it was. Uh, <laughs> I'll ask the, never mind, never mind. I'm not going to get into the president. But anyways, um, I, I'd, sl- I'd wake up, I'd wake up, I'd wake up, I'd snore, I'd wake up, I'd wake up, I'd wake up. And so while I was laying in bed, asleep, my body was not resting. And they gave me this little machine, uh, and most of you know what it is, and many of you have it as a little CPAP, and I'd wear this thing. Now, let me just tell you something about a CPAP, okay? If you struggle with sleeping at night and you think this might be an issue, go to the doctor and get one. It will change your life. It will change your sleep. I mean, and I don't get paid for this. I really don't. I should. I should be a CPAP spokesman because it changed my life. It literally did. But, you know, most people think, well, I got the... <laughs> you look like Darth Vader, Okay. <laughs> I got this little thing that goes around my ears and comes right here and it just sits right here and it blows oxygen in my nose but it's enough to keep that opening there so that I actually get sleep now. And you know what happened after I started using that sleep, that sleep, that, that CPAP? I get six hours sleep, wake up the next day like, man, I've been asleep for a week. I feel good. What happened? I finally got real rest. I finally got real rest. Uh, maybe you can relate to that <laughs> physically, but maybe a season of life where you went through something like that. Uh, you get the best sleep you think you get, and you're still physically exhausted. I found out this along the journey. Sometimes I get exhausted, not because of sleep, lack of sleep at night now, but sometimes I get physically exhausted because of lack of Sabbath rest. Because I fail to take time into my schedule to say, I'm going to push away the work. I'm going to push away what I've been doing for six days this week. And I'm going to take a day, and I'm just going to relax. I'm just going to rest in God and in his goodness. Uh, doing something else with my time. Uh, working on something that's fun. Working on something maybe that's, that's more, more laid back into my busy schedule. A Sabbath rest. And let me just say this because I had to learn this. And I still struggle with this. I'm, I'm preaching to the choir this morning. Sabbath rest is an act of faith. Because you all know how much you got to get done this week. Yeah. And yet pastors up here telling you, and God's telling you, take a day off yeah. and rest. But you don't know what I got. I, I understand. It's an act of faith. And here's what I have learned. I've learned when I, te- when I take that step of faith and I, and I rest the way God has intended for me to rest, it seems like those hours that I had in the week that were small, somehow God uses those hours to multiply. Even though he doesn't add hours, I get more accomplished in those hours. And I think it's because I'm simply following the principle of God of learning to rest every now and then. You ever struggle with it? I do. I do. Uh, the type of rest can change your life if you'll allow it to. It can change your schedule if you'll allow it to. Stepping out in faith, it might feel awkward. It might feel like, oh, I don't have the time to do this. But I'm going to tell you something. Biblically speaking, and from God's example, it will change your schedule if you learn to have some Sabbath rest. Yeah. True rest. Resting uh, like God did and just saying, you know what? It's all, it's, I can set it all aside for a little bit. A little bit. And now today, in my life today, sometimes I'll just take a whole day off and do nothing. I still struggle with it because I like, I like to go and do, you know. Uh, sometimes I'll take a half day here and a half day there and a half day there and, and just, just rest. Just relax. It's something we all need to understand. This is part of the chaos of our schedule sometimes is when we don't follow the pattern that God laid out for us, which is it's okay to rest. It's good to rest. 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 Step out in faith. Uh, choose God over other things sometimes and just follow his pattern and rest. And here's what I found out. When I do that, God has a way of taking care of everything else. Yeah, Find Sabbath rest. I'm not talking about, you know, I'll take an hour off work and play with the kids for a minute. No, I'm talking about fully resting. 
God did it. God did it. And he did it for our example for us to learn from. Find Sabbath rest. Number two. Number two. I think this one is just as crucial. And of course, during that Sabbath rest, this is an uh, important thing to implement during that. And we're going to go to Psalm 84 real quick and read uh, from there uh, a verse here in just a second. The second thing I would say is this. If you want to get out of the chaos of the hot mess of your schedule, learn to invest in time with God. You say, but that's just more stuff. It's amazing when you put him first in your schedule, how he blesses everything else. Invest in time with God. Uh, let, let, let me illustrate. Um, I need a helper. Anybody want, to help? Anybody want to volunteer? There's water involved. I, I'm just saying. Paul, you want to come help me? I really just need somebody with that. I need an extra set of hands, so. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay, hold both these over your head. No, I'm just kidding. Just, just hold on to them. <laughs> he, he's like, I'm regretting volunteering already. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that's right that's right it's hot in here so we'll, we'll dash come on over here so so when i talk about investing in time with god here's what we need to understand you can only pour out of yourself what you've put into yourself okay so so this glass and of course the water many times in scripture represents the holy spirit so we're gonna allow this water to represent god so so here's what i'm trying to illustrate okay this this is paul right here okay this is all paul's other things in life all right and, and so the more that paul invests in god now if that's all he invests that's all he can pour out into others go ahead and now guess what he's empty again he's empty again but the more that Paul invests in, oh, well, about got you. The more that Paul invests in God, the more Paul has to invest in others. The more Paul has to put out for others. The more Paul has to say, now look what I have in my life. You see how it works? It's a pretty simple, simple dynamic. You really think about. It. I'll take those, Paul. Thank you. you can drink that one. No, I'm kidding. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I can't, yeah, you want a bendy straw? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. And so this is the thing. If I'm going to learn to manage the chaos of my schedule, I have to understand this principle. The more of God I can put into me, the more I'll have to then be able to put out. And he does that with my schedule. He does that with my schedule. Uh, okay, let me, let me just say this. How many of you have heard somebody say this? You need to read the Bible more. I can stand here and I can tell you that, right? I just did. You need to read the Bible more. We all probably need to read it more, right? You know what that is? That's a head knowledge I just gave you. That's a head knowledge I gave you. That's not, that's not a heart change. That's not a heart decision. Uh, until that truly sinks down into my heart, then, then I don't get it. So let me help you. Psalm 84, verse number 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. A day, did you hear that? Did, did you catch that? A day in the presence of God is better than a thousand with anybody else. Amen? Amen. How many of you would say this? I'm sitting beside the person I, I, I would love to spend the most time, the, the person I want to spend the most time in my life with, I'm sitting beside right now. You, you husbands better get your hands up really fast. Good grief. At least the husband. You can be, I'll give you a line. Raise your stinking hand, all right? Man, let's try that again. How many of you say, I'm sitting beside the person I want to spend the most time I can with? Look at all those hands. Now they finally got it. Good job, guys. You can put your hand down. Oh, Ladies, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I had to prompt them for that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so, so you're sitting beside, hopefully you're married to, you're, you're friends with, you're, you're, you're fa whatever, who, you, who's with you. Those are people that you want to spend, I want to spend a lot of time with them, right? You know what Psalms just said? One day with God is better than a thousand with that person you're thinking of. It's better than a thousand with anybody you could imagine being with here on earth. We probably know this, I think. Um, there's 365 days in a year, unless there's a leap year. Then there's 368. I just see if he's listening. I just see if he's listening. 366. All right. So it's 365 days in a year. So 
roughly speaking, and I know I'm a little, little, little over, but roughly speaking, a thousand days is three years. Yeah. I don't think we get it. You think what God, you, you see what the psalmist says? Yeah. One day with God is better than three years with you. Yeah. And I'm not talking three years with somebody I don't like. I'm sorry, I can't point at you, Neil. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about you, but. <laughs> It's one day with God is better than three years with my favorite person, my human. Yeah. The person that God has put in my life for life, three years with them is not better than one day with God. Y'all with me? You want to get a you want to get a grasp on the chaos of schedule? Invest in time with God. It's great investing with each other, and we have to build relationships, and we have to work on those things here. I get all that, but invest in time with God first. It's extremely important. An entire day, one 24-hour period is better than three years of doing anything else with anyone else. Uh, does, does our time consist in set-aside time with God? Maybe you're here today and you say, man, I'm at my wit's end as far as schedule goes. I'm busy and you don't understand and you don't get it. Have you tried to figure out why you're so drained and why you can't get things done and, and why it seems hectic all the time and why the schedule is so full? I got to fit in my family and I got to work and sometimes I have to work extra because the bills are high, inflation's going up, and nobody seems to be helping us. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Have you stopped and thought, how much of my life am I investing in God? How much of my life am I investing in God? Like the glasses a moment ago, uh, what am I putting into my life? Because what I'm pouring into my life is what enables me then to pour back out to somebody else. That's the investment with God. And by the way, when you invest that little glass with God, Paul, I should, I should have done this way differently. When you invest that little glass with God, it's almost like he fills up five or six from that one. That's just what he does. He blessed. Invest in time with God. I won't ask you to answer this. Please do not answer this. If you answer this, I'm going to come back there with duct tape and, and don't answer. I do let me say this. Let me. I can't be any more clear than this. Do not answer this question. What's the first thing you do, or reach for, or spend time with in the morning when you wake up? Do not answer this question. You've been gone for six weeks. You come back and you cause problems. <laughs> I just tease. <teased. laughs> What's the first thing we do? Because here's the thing. Many of us. No. No. That's right. Right? <laughs> Some of us, well, I gotta get my coffee before I do anything else, or I'm gonna be a bear all day, right? And again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna say any of those things that you would say. That's what I do. I'm not gonna say those things are wrong in and of themselves. What I'm saying is this: Have we stopped and said maybe the first thing I should do is spend some time with God? Because yeah. here's what we have learned in any area of life: if we don't give priority to it, and we don't plan it, and we don't schedule it, it does not get done. Everybody in this room, if I were to ask, how many think you should spend time with God every day? Everyone would say, yeah, sure we should. But if you don't schedule it, if you don't plan it, if you don't put it in, it doesn't get done. That's just how it is. That's life. What do we invest in? Uh, maybe, maybe a morning thing is the first thing I do is I'm going to spend time with God. Maybe because of your work schedule and family thing, maybe it's an evening thing. Before I go to bed, I'm going to invest with God. I'm not saying when to do it. I'm not saying do it just like I do it because none of you could do it like I do it. And you shouldn't because we all are different. Amen. Thank God for that, right? I don't know, you know where you are, <laughs> uh, but I do know this. If you don't know how to invest in time with God, ask. You realize that God has given you a church and a body of believers that, that some of them do know those things? And are, 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 are. There I go being all presidential again. Uh, <laughs> they're willing to invest time in your life and give you answers? I, I believe with all my heart that every, every child of God uh, should read the Bible every day. I think, I think you should read from Psalms, Proverbs, and Acts every day of your life. We say, why? Well, Psalm, Psalms is a book of praise. It's learning to praise God. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Acts is a book of power. We need all three of those things in our daily Christian lives. Spend a chapter on each. Correlate with the day of the week. Read it every day. You can do more than that. I'm just, I'm just giving you some tips, okay? If you're a new Christian, I just got saved. I'm new to this stuff. Start with 1 John. 
Start with 1 John and read about the love of God just over and over and over again. And then go to the Gospels and read about the ministry of Jesus Christ. Don't start in Leviticus. Because you ain't going to be investing in time with God. You're going to be investing in time with the, with the Sandman, all right? You're going to be sleeping real fast, all right? Now, you get to Leviticus eventually, okay? But it's okay to put it off a little while, all right? Especially if you're a new Christian, all right? Invest in time with God. Again, it's a step of faith. It's a step of faith. Church is here to help you. We're here to help you. Everyone is different. Not everything works the same for everybody. We're here about Anna advocating. Spend time with God. You'll be surprised what the, the, the more that you invest in time with God, how the schedule seems to just become a little bit more fluid, a little bit more flexible, and that thing you thought was going to take you three hours, you got done in an hour. Woo! Amen? What are we doing? We're putting him first. We're putting him first in the midst of the chaos. Find Sabbath rest. Invest in time with God. Let me get this last thing, number three. Most important, number three. I'm going to go to Luke chapter 2. Say, we're going to talk about the birth of Jesus? Not necessarily. Luke chapter 2. Number three, give God your schedule. This is where I struggle. And if you're honest with this morning, this is probably where you struggle. I have to do this. I want to do this. I'm required to do this. And we start putting all this together and say, this is how I'm going to plan my day. Have you ever just stopped and thought about, what if I just said to God, God, you dictate it to me today. You show me. You lead me. You guide me. You direct me. You cut out what I shouldn't do, and you add what I need to that I didn't think about. Give God your schedule. Uh, Most people believe Jesus was on this earth for about 30, 33 years. And uh, prior to his, his death, of course, and his wonderful, glorious resurrection. Amen. When the Bible tells us about three of those years is when he spent in his earthly ministry. Healing, preaching, teaching. And the scripture tells us a little bit about Jesus' life as a younger person before he ever got to that three years of ministry. And if you go to Luke chapter 2, it says this in verse 41. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple. Now, let me, let me just pause right there. This is not even a message. This is a freebie. Can you imagine a 12-year-old? His parents and all of his acquaintances have left him behind. Nobody's, nobody's there to check on him. And he's in church. Amen. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? The average 12-year-old today is going to be like, dude, full, full day video games. You know? A pool party, baby. You know? They come back and they find him in the temple. I, I, I don't even want to think what my 12-year-olds would have been doing, and I walked, God left them alone home for three days. I don't even want to think about it. <laughs> he was, exactly. He was exactly where he was supposed to be. Look at, look at verse, uh, uh, verse 46. They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors. Now, here's where it gets even better. Both hearing them and asking them questions. Now, let me ask you. Jesus didn't need to ask questions. He knew everything, all right? But he's, he's filling them out. He, 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 they're talking back and forth. Verse 47 says this, And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. They're like, you just, you just didn't show up. And for three days we were looking and we were worried. Oh, look at his answer, verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not... I must be about my father's business. You know what I don't see in Scripture? I don't see Joseph going, but I'm your father. Uh Uh-uh. They knew exactly what Jesus was saying. They knew exactly he was in the place he was supposed to be, doing exactly what he was supposed to be, fulfilling the will of the Father. Give God your schedule. Jesus did. Parents up and left, and Jesus said, hey, my time to leave. God's going to dictate my schedule. I'm going to stay here. I've got to be about my father's business. What a foundational key to taking your schedule from a hot mess 
to a manageable calendar. I must be about my father's business. What, what does God have planned? What does God want? And by the way, you put Sabbath rest together with, with giving God your schedule and, and investing in time with God. You, don't, you know what that makes a day like today? Priority. It makes it his day. It makes it his time. It makes it a time where we say, I'm going to get together with fellow brothers and sisters of Christ, and I'm going to invest my time in God corporately together with one another so that I can see God. I'm going to give him my schedule. Now, there was a day in America where Sunday was Sunday. Everything was shut down. Everybody went to church. Everybody respected God. Now, those times have changed. We understand that. But as children of God, if I truly want to manage my schedule, you know when my schedule starts? Spending time with God on Sunday. Amen. It's a, it's a good practice. Amen. Y'all with me? It's a great thing. And then it just continues through the week. Uh, maybe, maybe, there's a, uh, maybe there's something in your life, and again, I'm not, not, don't, I don't know everything going on in your life, but, but maybe there's something today, and your action that you need to make today is just simply saying this, God, I'm going to give you control of my schedule. You can have it. It's hard to do. I know there's deadlines to be meet, met, meet, meted, meted. There's family to be taken care of. There's bills to be paid. There are things that come up last minute, and you got to do. I, I understand all that. But before you make a list, and before you schedule a day, and before you fill out a calendar, how about this? How about just laying at the feet of Christ? Amen. God, here's what I feel like I need to accomplish today, or this week, or this month, or whatever. God, would you would you speak to me? Now, again, you're not going to hear him say, cross off number four. <laughs> Move number 10 up three spaces. All right. But when you learn to invest in time with God, here's the reality. It stops being just you talking to him, and you learn to listen, and he speaks back. And he works in your life. What about, what about that when I get up to make my schedule for the day or for the week? God, I'm laying at your feet because I want to prioritize you. You get to call the shots. You get to make the schedule. And I'll just follow along in faith. If you practice that, you'll want to change that. You'll want to allow God to continue to do that in your life. I promise you this. If you lay your schedule at God's feet, God will meet you. And God will help you with those things. I love what he says in Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to turn there. I can't quote both verses off the top of my head. I could, but I don't want to mess them up because I want you to hear every word of it. Matthew chapter 7, and verse 7 and 8. We know the scripture. We're familiar with the passage. We can, we can summarize it, but listen to the words. Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. You, you following the word? That's again, I want, I want to give you the exact, ye shall find. Knock, and it sh shall be opened unto you. For when it asketh, receiveth, he that seeketh, findeth, him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Do you see what God says? You come, I'll do the rest. You bring it to me, I'll take care of that. You, you ask, you'll find. You seek, I'll answer, right? That's what he says in Scripture. You press him and invest in him, and, and you give him your schedule, and all of a sudden, you, here's what you'll watch. My priorities also start to shift. Because what I thought was humanly important, God says, wait a minute, don't forget about me. Don't forget about me. People begin to notice... Your family begins to notice. Your coworkers begin to notice. You, you, all of a sudden, you got time for that rest that you never used to take before. When you set aside time to invest in God and you give him your schedule, God takes that hot mess and says, just watch. Look what I can do with it. How do you find peace in the midst of chaos in the area of schedule? How do you get control out of an out-of-control situation? Real simple. You give it to him. You give it to him. And all of a sudden, you'll find that in the time that you do have, and even in doing other things that aren't necessarily a spiritual activity, God is still involved in those things as well. And you'll find yourself being gospel-centered in everything you do when he has first place, and when he has your schedule, and when you're investing in time with him. Now, I don't know this morning what this need looks like to you. I don't know what you're going through right now at this time in your life. I do know a few of you right now, you'd be honest and say, man, you have no clue how bad my schedule is right now. Everything is crazy. It's a hot mess. I've been there. I'm there more often than I wish I were. 
I, I think I've given you three biblical truths this morning that truly help us reverse that chaos of a situation and turn our schedule into something that's productive for Christ. But I've got to take those initial steps. I've got to decide to do it. The principles that we glean from Scripture are the same for each and every one of us. Our circumstances might be different, but the principles remain the same. Take some practical steps and make that hot mess of a schedule into something that's manageable. And you know what you'll find out? You go from just surviving to all of a sudden thriving. Amen. It's no longer, oh, it's a, ah. what a joy. What a joy. If it was important for God to rest, it's important for us to rest. Sabbath wasn't made for man, or Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. All right. Uh, we, we see God's instruction. Find rest. Find rest. Give the schedule to God. Invest in him with your time. He'll take care of the rest. But let me just say this. And I'll remind you this. I'm done. It's a step of faith. It's a step of faith. Because it's hard to do. Because I don't know about you. I like controlling my life. Amen. I like, uh, this is what I'm doing. And this is how, And God says, hey, 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 hello. What about me? What about me? You don't have to live in the chaos of, of, of a hectic schedule. Now, I'm not saying anything's going to slow down. Everything, you're never, that's all I'm saying. What I'm saying is this. We don't have to live like that every day of our lives. We can get victory over that. But we've got to follow biblical principles, biblical formula for getting that victory. Find Sabbath rest. It's, it's not that hard. <laughs> I know it's a, it's a step of faith. I get it. Find Sabbath rest. Invest time with God more than anyone else, and then daily, weekly, monthly, whatever, give that schedule to God and let him work. And you can go from chaos to peace if we can follow some biblical principles. I don't know about you. I need everything I said today. And, and I'm thankful that God gives us a pattern to follow. Amen? The schedule's chaotic, but God can do so much more with it if we'll give it to him. Father, Lord, I pray this morning you will take what has been said. I pray that you'll use it to help us. Lord, I know this wasn't a mind-blowing outline and everything starting with the same point, and three points with subpoints and a poem and a joke. But Lord, I really believe the three principles this morning are, are extremely valuable in our lives. Uh, we all struggle with time management. We all struggle with schedule. We all struggle with the chaos and how hectic life is and the stress. Lord, may we learn biblically how to uh, apply these truths to help us avoid the chaos and avoid the hot mess of a schedule. Help us, Lord, to invest our time with you. Help us to give you our schedule. Help us, Lord, to find that Sabbath rest that is so important that God himself gave us the example of. And help us to use our time uh, to best glorify you, Lord, we pray. Our family suffers. Our time with you suffers, Lord, when we don't let you have control of our schedule. Help us to allow you to do so, I pray. Heads are bowed this morning. Eyes are closed. Just a, a brief invitation. We'll be done this morning. You're here today and you'd say this, Pastor, first of all, I can allow God to have my schedule. I, I can invest time with God because I know God. I, I'm, a, I'm a born again child of God this morning. Heaven's my eternal home. I'm saved. I, I'm, I'm a Christian. Whatever words you want to use, I know Jesus is my Savior. There's been a time in my life where I've trusted Him and only Him as my only hope of heaven. And if I were to die today, Pastor, I'm going to heaven because I know Christ. Not because of my baptism or my good works or my church attendance, but I know Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. And that's me this morning. Would you do this? Nobody's looking. Just slip your hand out. I just want to rejoice with you. Amen. Good. Hands all over. Good, good, good. Praise the Lord. Put them down. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. Good. Maybe you're here today and you say, Pastor, I, I, I have to be honest. I, I couldn't raise my hand. I'm not sure heaven's my eternal home. I'm not sure I know this Jesus the way you just mentioned. I'm not sure that, you know, he has my heart and, and I'm trusting him and on him to get me to heaven. I, I, I'm just not positive. Would you pray for me? Listen, I, I promise you this. I'm not calling your name. I'm not going to embarrass you in any way, but could I pray for you this morning? I'm just not sure heaven is my home when I die. Would you pray for me? Would you do this? Nobody's looking. Just slip your hand up, slip it right back down. I want to pray for you in this minute. I'm just not sure heaven's my home. Would you pray for me? I'm just not sure. Thank you. I appreciate your honesty. I'm just not sure. Would you pray for me? I'm just not sure. All right, thank you. All right, one last question. No need to raise your hand this morning, but I want you to think about this in your heart. 
How's your schedule? Is it a hot mess? You say, Pastor, you don't understand. I, I, I may not understand your exact circumstances, but I do understand this. God is in control of everything. And the sooner I learn to give him my schedule, and the sooner I learn to invest more in him, the sooner I realize that peace can come in the midst of the chaos. And maybe this morning, what you need to do during the invitation as we stand and sing, maybe this morning you just need to, to sit where you are, come to it, all, it doesn't matter what you do, but maybe you just need to talk, stop and talk with God and say, God, my schedule, you know, <laughs> I'm struggling. Would you help me? I'll give it to you. I'll let you work. Help me to invest more. I don't know the need, but maybe the invitation, you need to take that time in that moment just to say, God, I want to get this settled with you today. If that's your need, we'll stand again. We'll sing as we sing. Do business with God. Uh, that's why we have this closing time of invitation. We allow you to, to do business with God and to settle something with him who's spoken to your heart. Father, Lord, I don't know each individual life's needs in their every set of circumstances, but Lord, you do. And I know many times we struggle with this just simply because we haven't surrendered it. Uh, we struggle with schedule because we haven't sacrificed it to you. We haven't laid it on an altar before your feet and said, God, you be in charge. Uh, maybe our time investing in you is not what it needs to be. Uh, Lord, I, I, I don't know the specifics of our individual lives. Maybe, maybe this, this thing of finding rest is something we still struggle with. Whatever it may be, help us to get victory over the chaos and the messiness of our schedule by giving it to you, I pray. And then watch and see what you do in our lives. We thank you for it now. Help us as we sing this time of invitation. Lord, and we close. If decisions need to be made, help us to make them today. I pray we ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Would you stand with me this morning as we sing, I've decided to follow Jesus. Follow him in your schedule. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. The world behind me. The cross before me. No turning back. No turning back. Amen. Right before we close in prayer this morning, if you're getting baptized this morning, you want to slip out and get changed in the restroom there, you can do that. And uh, we are going to be baptizing a couple right after the morning service on the porch. If you want to wait until everybody's ready before you go out, it is about 9,000 degrees out. Uh, you're welcome to sit in here until everybody's ready. And then we'll say, come on out. And that way you don't have to sit and endure the heat while we're getting ready. Uh, but give them just a couple of minutes. But I encourage you to stay and uh, watch them. Got two young guys getting baptized today. And it's always exciting to see somebody taking that next step for the Lord. And then, of course, we want to be a blessing to them as they grow in their relationship with him as well. And uh, so stay and check that out. Watch for a few minutes. And uh, we'll have another one down the road as well, but uh, excited about them getting baptized today. So, but like I say, stay inside in the air until it's time, and then we'll get everybody out there ready, okay? Amen. All right, let's have a word of prayer as we close this morning. But, Bob, would you close this morning, please?